All right, woohoo! Let's try it again. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Um, so Valentine's Day is the spirit of celebrating love. So what better day to have our guests here today? First of all, thank you so much for being here. I love this event. I love that you all come out and we are at capacity. We are bringing in a few more chairs, but there are some open spots. So please feel free to come sit down, relax, enjoy, and celebrate love uh, together today. Um, I have a couple of announcements and I want to tell you kind of how the format's going to run today. The format for today's event is going to be very similar to last year. I don't know if anybody was here when Claudia was here last year, um, but what we did was we talked to her for about, you know, 30 minutes or so, and, and I can't wait to talk to these ladies and hear their stories and about the Mama Dragons organization. And then one of the things that was so beautiful about the event last year was because we're in this smaller room and because it's such a wonderful, intimate talk topic and it's such a storytelling kind of thing. We really want to open up for questions, ideas, thoughts, experiences. It's an opportunity to share. When we're in the Great Hall, it's much harder to send a mic all around. So to be able to send uh, an opportunity for you guys to ask questions or to have your voices be heard, we definitely want to make sure that we have that today. So we'll do some talking up front, but then if you have anything that you want to know or you want to ask about or if you want to share, this is a definitely a day for that. So that's what I wanted to tell you about that. And that's one of the things that's special about being in this room, in the Whiting Room, in a smaller, more intimate environment. Um, also, I have something really exciting to, to announce. Um, there is a new project that I've been working on. Um, many of you know that I'm a musician. I teach in the music department. I come from California and LA, and um, I'm very lucky to be able to travel all over the world with other musicians. And so many times people ask me about my experience living here in Utah and how it compares to other places around the world in California. And we start talking about all the different experiences and often the topic of uh, you know, the LGBTQ plus experience in Utah comes up with a lot of my friends and, and they have been expressing a desire to help and how can we, you know, make more connections, you know, inside of Utah, outside of Utah, all over the world. So I've been cooking up this new project and we're working on, it's, it's not in place yet, but we can announce the desire to try to make it happen, which is a brand new scholarship um, that I'm calling the Forever Network. And we have some paper and literature on it here. Um, the idea behind this scholarship is that it's going to be um, a full, we, we hope, of, you know, as it comes and develops and we can gain the funding for it, um, you know, a full scholarship for a student who identifies. Um, in addition, I know we have our allies scholarship, but this would be another opportunity um, to, to broaden that help and that support. Um, so a student who identifies as LGBTQ+, plus, um, to have not only the scholarship, but also a network of professionals that would be in contact with them in other areas of the world and wherever you go next, you know, be it if you stay in Utah or you go somewhere else, you would have a network of people who have supported your education. So if you're interested in finding out more about that, please feel free to take one of these, um, ask me questions. I am super excited about it. Um, I know my friends around the world, um, you know, want to be a support to, you know, everybody here and um, just to keep that love going across the state seas and across the state and and then wherever we can get it. So that's my my big announcement is the the drive to get this um, forever network started. So if you want to know more about it, please let me know. Okay, I think that's all my business for today. So I'd love to welcome to our stage and give a round of applause to our representatives from the organization Mama Dragons. So visiting us today are Lisa and Rachel, and I'd love to start with either one of you, whoever wants to go first. And, um, you know, this this topic and everything that we talk about in this event and on Valentine's Day is about stories. So we'd love for maybe one of you to, to go ahead and start out and tell, tell, us, tell us about yourself and your story. All right. Well, <laughs> my name is Rachel Ellis, and... Um, I am a mom of four kids, and my oldest is 15, and three, about three years ago, she came out to us as transgender, um, and at the time, that was really difficult. Um, what was really difficult was that for quite a while up to that point, 
we felt like we were losing her. We didn't know what was wrong. She was really, really depressed, really unhappy, and we tried lots of different things to help her, and we couldn't. And when she finally came out to us, a lot more made sense, and we were able to get her some help and help her get healthy and, and start supporting her. But as many of you know, I'm sure, um, being LDS and living in Utah with the culture that we have, it was a struggle as a mom. I felt like I was the only one going through what I was going through. I felt very alone. And um, around the time that I started supporting my daughter, um, I, I came across Mama Dragons as a group. And I felt like I found my tribe. In fact, one of the, one of the Mama Dragons, as I was being welcomed, her message to me was, welcome to your tribe. And I just broke down crying. I, I felt like I was finally safe and home with people that understood what we were going through and what the challenges we had to face. And um, so now, where I'm at with Mama Dragons, it's been a few years, and I um, now I work as an admin um, for the T-Mama group, which is a subgroup of Mama Dragons, and I, um, I help administrate that group on Facebook. Wow, that's a very powerful story. Can, can you talk a little bit about um, how you handled, or even now how you handle the relationship between all of your siblings and, and your family dynamic, and a little bit how that's evolved over the last few years? Yeah, so our, um, our family, like I said, they're pretty young. Like At the time when Cindy came out, she was 12, and um, so we had kids all the way down to six or five at the time, and so... Um, we, it was hard because she was having a hard time. She was really depressed. And so we started, as we started bringing her back into family activities and trying to support her, use her, um, her preferred name and pronouns, um, we had to explain to the kids um, what being transgender meant. And we found some really great uh, children's literature, um, particularly uh, like, fictional stories where they could really connect to what it felt like to be transgender and why it was important to be supportive. And they've always been great. There's never been an issue with supporting their sister. They they just wrapped their arms around her. I, when we first told our kids, um, my little boy, he's 10 now, and at the time he just started to cry. And I said, what's wrong? You know, this isn't a bad thing. And he said, I'm just so sad for how Cindy must have felt and how we must have made her feel. And and he just became like her biggest ally right there. Do you remember any of the literature? Because one of the great things is to sort of share those resources. Yes. And I know there's a lot on the website and we can get into talking about mm -hmm. that, but was yeah. there any particular books or or things that you, know, you, you can remember to share? Yeah, yeah. no, because my kids were little, um, I started with a picture book. My favorite one to recommend is Red, a Crayon Story. Um, and it just talks about how there's a crayon that has a wrapper that says that it's red, but it's not. It's blue. And it goes through, and it's very cute, and the kids really connect to it. They understand um, what it actually means to look one way on the outside and feel differently on the inside. And we um, another book that they really loved was uh, George. That's a fun, it's a little chapter book. And then Gracefully Grayson is a little bit longer chapter book that's appropriate for um, like upper elementary, early middle school. And we'll write, as we've done last year, that we have a lot of resources um, from our event last year, and we'll write, write those down on the website, on the archive page today, so we can have more of those available to you as well. Well, I have so many more questions about Mama Dragons, but first, let's have another story. <laughs> Well, I'm Lisa Fry, and I live in Santa Clara, and Rachel and I actually live quite close to each other. First, I want to say Rachel is what gives me hope for the future of our kids. I'm old, she's young, and <laughs> we're making progress. Well, um, and as equally, Lisa was there for me as this was super, super hard. We sat for, I think, five hours one day <laughs> on, we on a long, porch. <laughs> we can have some Crying, long talking, yeah. you yeah. know, so. So I, um, I come to this from, I have a, a son who's gay. 
And um, he came out in 2012 when he was 23. Before that, when he was about four years old, I was outside playing with him. And um, he didn't have any stereotypical mannerisms that I would say, oh, I have a gay child. Just this little kid out there playing. And all of a sudden, a voice said to me, Jordan's gay. And I went, what? Wait a minute. And um, hearing that, I mean, you can all decide where that might have come from. It started me thinking, and I had a long time to study the subject. I had a long time to think about the subject. I had a long time to decide what I felt about it. So when he comes to me when he's 23, because I really never knew for sure, but I did um, realize that just because my child was gay or not gay, somebody's kid was, right? So I had to make a decision and decide what I thought about it. So I had a long time to do that, and um, I had a lot of preparation. So when he came out to me, it was a beautiful thing. It was a good thing, and I wasn't blindsided by it. But he wasn't ready to come out to his whole family, my husband, his siblings. I have six children, and he's the um, fourth one, <laughs> I can't even think. Um, and it took him about five months before he came out to the whole family. And when he did, he did it by a email. His older sister had figured it out and had opened up the conversation with him and gave him the courage to come out to the rest of the family. And he sent an email, which I had gotten up really early in the morning and seen a text. And he says, Mom, check your email. So I did. And it, it was just a beautiful coming out to his siblings. But I knew at that point our life would change. I, we live in a very small, conservative southern Utah town. And I knew that this was the beginning of something. He didn't want to tell, he didn't want to send the email to his youngest brother, our youngest child, who is Lincoln Fry, sitting right here on the front, <laughs> because he was in high school and he didn't, he was worried about him. He was more concerned about our feelings, his siblings' feelings, than he was about his own. Um, so, I guess our, my story is the responses that came back to Jordan through the, that email. They were incredible. They were loving and kind, and Lincoln's was my favorite. When we finally told him, when he came home from school, we said, you know, Jordan's gay, whatever, and he sent his email back to him was, Jordan, this really doesn't change anything. Let's go play Star, StarCraft, okay. <laughs> Love unconditionally your brother Lincoln. I mean, that was as much as it bothered him, right? But um, so our family was fine. Our family was good. We had support. Even people I was nervous about telling. Um, I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and there were people I was nervous about. I thought, Ugh, what's this gonna, reaction going to be? And I want to protect my child with everything I have. It was loving, surprisingly loving, embracing, encouraging, because they knew Jordan. They knew Jordan, and it made all the difference in the world. So trying to fast forward through all this story, I have a friend I'd gone to, graduated from high school with. He was, he's a psychiatrist. Um, he's gay, and he has a husband who he had to marry in Canada because he couldn't marry him in the United States. Anyway, he works in this arena, and he asked if we would publish our story online because it was a positive story. And, but we ca I asked Jordan, and Jordan said, well, I guess if it helps anybody. So we finally agreed to do it. And um, the day it went on his blog, all of a sudden my phone blew up. And I thought, oh, some, he's, something's happened. And I think that first week, I don't know, it had like 30,000 reads or whatever. And what it did for me is it opened my eyes to how many people are, are out there and are terrified and afraid. And, you know, these kids were private messaging me or parents were private messaging me. And it just brought me into this arena in such a bigger way than it had been previously. So um, I'm one of the older Mama Dragons. I think we have about, we have over 2,000 members now. I think when I joined there was probably 50 or something. 
So I've been around for a while, and um, she's a mama, mama dragon. It's a mama. <laughs> I'm a grandmama dragon. <laughs> but anyway, that's that's basically my story. How did you find the organization? What was that? Pro was it just getting started at the time when? Because I, I don't. I'd love to know more about the history and that kind of thing. Yes. Um, there was another group called I'll Walk With You, which is a group for parents of LGBTQIA children who also are connected to the LDS church. So uh, my friend, my psychiatrist friend, had kind of shuffled me into this group. I was really nervous about joining any groups because I thought if it was connected in any LDS form, they would be saying to me, well, you got to change your kid, which I knew you don't do. Um, so I was really hesitant, but anyway, when he directed me there, I went, well, it must be okay. He actually started the group, by the way. Um, in that, I had shared the email from Jordan, and that's, that somebody who had just started Mama Dragons had seen it there and then invited me into Mama Dragons. So Mama Dragons, the name comes from a woman named Meg Abhow, and her son came out to her when he was, I believe, 12. And she had always been con considered herself a mama, a mama bear, but she decided that was not fierce enough for her. And she had gone into her closet after her son had come out, and you know, she, she hugged her son and did all the right things at the right time, but then went and cried in her closet, which happens a lot. <laughs> um, it's and yeah, it's a yeah. common part of our yeah. story. <laughs> <laughs> and she said she could just really feel herself growing talons and scales and breathing fire and you know a mama dragon was just about the a better a better thing it's such a great I mean what a great image what a great title you know and all of that I'd love to know and I know you have some things about the organization um some people may be very familiar with the organization but some of our audience may not be familiar with the organization at all and I know it's gained such momentum I mean it has really a national reputation at this point can either of you talk a little bit about the organization what it represents and and we can get into maybe some of the programs that it sponsors yeah, sure. Um, so it started out as like a message group, um, and it had several people, like mothers, on this message group. And then there would be like so many conversations going on within that same message thread that they realized that they needed something bigger. So they started a, a secret Facebook group to keep it private so that they could fly under the radar still if they needed to, like in their wards or in their families or in their communities. And um, so they they built the Mama Dragon Council and then it started getting bigger and bigger and pretty soon it, that started out as like everybody had met them in person. Like they only knew the person personally. And then it, as it started to get bigger, they opened it up to a closed group. And um, that's where it really started to gain momentum over the last few years. And in, I think it was in last year, in 2018, it became a 501c3 nonprofit. And um, so the board has made a lot of big and exciting changes to help us grow and help us keep our momentum. Um, but now, if you want to join Mama Dragons, you can go to the Mama Dragons website, and um, there's a Join Us link, and you can click on the link and fill out the form. And it is for mothers. I mean, it I, is there are people who mothers. would love to join Mama Dragons, and it's always appreciated, but it really is for mothers mm -hmm. of LGBTQIA kids. Um, there is a public like Facebook page and, and a lot of the information's there, but we're very protective of our mothers and for, for good reasons, I think. And you can go ahead and tell them that. Yeah. So our mission statement is to support, educate, and empower mothers. Um, and it, our roots are in Mormonism, but um, we now are open to all all mothers um, of any background. Obviously, um, we have a strength in reaching mothers who come from conservative religious backgrounds, um, but we are open to everyone and we have 
a very diverse background. Yeah. Um, as an admin, I see kind of the back side of how we protect our mothers as they come in. Um, so we will message with them back and forth to make sure, you know, to vet them. And, and then they, um, as they join the group, we watch very carefully to make sure that it's a very loving and uh, supportive culture. So you do vet, I mean, vets mm -hmm. maybe a strong word, right. but you do make check because I would imagine that yes. there could be some, you know, uh, people coming in with different intentions and different right. ideas. So that's mm -hmm. that's great to know about that. When you go to the website, there's just so so many resources available. I know that there's just many different pages of resources. There's the blog that has a lot of stories. I'm really curious about, there's a lot of different subgroups that you can mm -hmm. participate in um, that are based on different things, based on location or different ideologies. Can you talk a little bit about some of those? You mentioned the tea mama, there's, there's all yes. different things. Can you talk about those different groups? So we have a subgroup for mothers of transgender or non-binary or gender non-conforming kids, um, anything under the trans umbrella. Um, and then we have subgroups, one called Mamas Trying to Stay for moms that want to stay in their spiritual community, and so they're trying to make it work for them. Um, we have a group called Mamas Moving Forward for mothers who have left their spiritual roots and are trying to navigate that path. And we have um, regional groups for different regions within the country. So uh, we have like a, what what's our regional group? Southern Utah, Nev um, Las Vegas, really. And Nevada, yeah. yeah. Southern Utah, Southern Nevada. Nevada. Yeah. And then, um, anyway, we have several different Utah regions because that's where we are the biggest at this point, but then we have all across the world, we have international an international regional group as well. D d I was, uh, one thing I just wanted to bring up and maybe we were, um, we, I think on the thing it says we're an activist group. I wanna explain that a little bit more. We, f our number one priority, and, and this might not hit people correctly, the, you know, um, is to support the mother. And we have reasons why we're, we work with the mothers rather than every other person on the planet. We feel like if we support the mother, they'll support their child. Um, we have just a real diversity of people. And so we have some people who, they're in Mama Dragons, but they're very vocal and they are activists. And they, we all ally in our own ways. We ally to our children different ways. I mean, some kids want moms marching in parades and, and waving flags, and other kids just want their mom to be quiet and just love them. And so we just have a, it's really diverse. And so the good thing about it is we support the mother, and then the mothers go out, and they, they are activists in whatever way they choose to be. Does that make sense? Yeah. And for some of them, that really is just using the right pronouns. You know, like, or it could be as big as we have some really big activists within our group, um, national activists that have all kinds of platforms that they work under. Well, I'd like to get into that a little bit more because, as I mentioned to you before, um, you know, a few people emailed me ahead of time who, who couldn't attend today and really wanted to ask. They're very curious about the religious question. And I think that's something that probably you, you get all the time, you know. And I know you mentioned that the group wanting to stay and then the group that has severed ties or, or left. Um, can you talk about um, e either if you're comfortable with talking about your own personal path or um, how you manage or how some of the people you know navigate that, particularly with their faith here in Utah? Yeah. Well, first of all, um, there are, I've seen this many, many, many times over. A, a mom will find out their child um, identifies in one of those letters and because of their traditions, their backgrounds, their upbringing, I mean, this just rocks their world to the very core of their world. And I've one woman who's now just an incredible support to the community. Her, 
she had a full on nervous breakdown, like a real, like she was in hospitalized. Her, her uh, in-laws had to come live with her for three months. I mean, she just stopped functioning. There are so many people who really just curl up in the fetal position and it sounds dramatic, but it's for many people, this is their eternal yeah, it, it affects your whole yeah, eternal I mean, it's salvation huge. and their it's, child's eternal salvation yeah. and whether they're going to be with their child for eternity. And yeah, so it's a big, it's, it's a huge part of our psyche as we try to navigate this for sure. And, and some of us make peace with it really early on. Um, and like with Lisa, where she, you know, had many years to decide how it fit into her faith and how to navigate it. And, and some of us kind of have a crash course and have to figure it out really quick while our kids are, you know, having mental health problems. <laughs> and so um, many of us, uh, we, like I said, we have the different groups that kind of support the different paths. And many of us traverse through multiple groups. Um, and it, it really is individual, how you make it work. A lot of us become really nuanced in how the, the doctrine of, of the church, uh, the, how we interpret the doctrine of the church. So we may have interpreted it one way before, and then we change the way we look at it. And then we say, okay, so maybe this really means this. Maybe this really means this. And then... Um, for a lot of us, it it comes down to love and wanting to um, wanting to spread that love beyond our own child to the people in our own communities that we're going to come across. And so, a lot of us want to stay in our religious community and be that safe haven for those that we know are going to come out in our congregations and in our communities. Um, some of us, for some of us, that's just not possible. Um, it becomes too hurtful to go to church and hear things that are um, that are against what we feel are our core children's identities, our children's core identities. And um, so for some of us, it becomes a mental health issue that we just can't stay at church. Um, and in the organization of Mama Dragons, uh, I imagine that it's a challenge because you have, you know, I mean, even in the subgroups, there's a group who has left and a group who is trying to stay and mm -hmm. how as an organization do, does that I mean are there conversations that are I mean how does that even work you know are, are those groups talking to each other or not talk, I mean how yeah so within the large group the closed group everyone has to be a member of that to be in any of the subgroups and that's the closed Facebook group mm -hmm. the closed Facebook group oh, yes. okay so everybody has to be a member of that large group before they can join any of the other subgroups or the regional groups or anything else and so there is always conversation going on in that large group it's actually it moves quite quickly there's quite a bit of discussion all the time and yeah there are really differing ideas about how to handle things um, but what it all comes down to is that that um, that thread that goes through all of us is that we all want to love and protect our kids. And so ultimately, when, when we disagree about how that looks, we just agree to disagree. Mm. And, and, and we can say, yeah, you can support your child in that way and I'll support my child in this way and it's okay. And then as the organization as a whole, is there any um, impetus to move forward into like like it's a supportive group but do you have any desire or plan to move into the political realm or to have a more um uh more activist type of influence over any kind of doctrine be it political or is that a, is is that part of the conversation or not i'm just curious no, at times w uh the board will make a statement about something that's happened but we don't enter the political arena we don't have any Although aspirations it is always part of the conversation. Oh, yeah. I mean... Like, we're always talking about that, it. We're always talking <laughs> about it. It's... I, I think the thing is, is we do have to focus on our core mission statement, really. And then we have these really deep and sometimes heated conversations um, within the group. But what happens is then people go out and, you know, ally as they feel like they should. And, and there's a million different ways that it's happening out there. It really is. We have, it's a very powerful group of women. 
but um, everybody kind of does it in their own way, I'd say. Right. I see. I have two more questions that I wanted to make sure to, to get out, and then I'd love to open it up to the audience. Um, one is, um, I know one of the things that's on the forefront of so many people's minds, not just in Utah, but everywhere, is... Um, uh, you know, the, the, the risk of um, not only great anxiety, depression, but ultimately suicide. And, and that's a topic that I know we as a faculty are so, so, so concerned about. Um, do you, in your experience or in your work with the group, do you have any thoughts, suggestions, advice, um, any, anything to offer regarding that, um, that, that, you know, situation that we're encountering so, yes. so often here? So one of our programs is uh, like fitting in with our mission statement of educating. Um, one of our programs is the QPR, Suicide Prevention Training. And we do um, sponsor that and provide QPR trainings. Um, we have some licensed trainers to do that. Um, and as far as ideas, like... I am loath to like offer suggestions <laughs> in this kind of a setting just because um, off the top of my head I may say something incorrectly. Right. Um, but but I get educated because there are some really great trainings out there um, to really help you be a support to those that – and, I mean, we know that it's really high in um, statistically that LGBT people have a high-risk um, statistic – for suicide. So that has, since the beginning of Mama Dragons, that's been a huge focus. Um, suicide is a, a huge thing in our group because we have many parents or mothers who have, whose you know, child has have died by suicide. Um, many of my good friends have had their child die that way. And it's you know, we all feel each other's loss. And even early on, um, our, our past uh, Mama Dragon president, her son died by suicide. And one of the first things that we did as a group is we, we barely knew this woman just from Facebook, and it was a small group. But those of who could attended the funeral. And that's, you know, we're there to support in whatever way we can. Suicide's such a big, you know, there's not really one thing you can put your finger on, but we discuss it a lot and we see themes that go throughout the discussions. So we have some pretty good ideas and about what can be triggers and we also realize how important it is for this support. And it just kind of goes back to our roots. Our kids need to be supported. They need to feel the love from their family first. Yeah, that's it's the most important thing. We don't want we don't want to have a Mama Dragons. We wish this group was not in existence, really. Yeah, I mean, we, we want needed. everybody's own mother or father or whatever to hold them and hug them and love them as they are. We, we don't want to be replacement mothers, but we do become that in many cases because mm -hmm. we hear it all. You know, kids are kicked out or and a lot of times it's just a miscommunication with the parents I mean kids assume I know my son he didn't really think his family would abandon him but he was still terrified he waited till he was 23 to come out to us I mean it's just a hard thing and you know anyway that's my thought on Sue's and I wanted to get your opinion, but also to follow up, we do have a lot of great resources on campus. Our the SUU Allies um, does sponsor. You know, we do have some of those trainings that we've talked about. And so, if anybody wants to find out more about what we have on campus, definitely check out the SUU Allies page. And there's a lot of resources available there that that we do have here. But I was curious to hear what your uh, impressions were and opinions. And then the last thing we were talking about, for of, in terms of my questions, that we were talking about in the green room was. Um, some of the things that people might not realize um, when when wanting to ask questions about a transgender individual, and I know that that's something that that you were saying that that a lot of times people don't even know what's appropriate or not appropriate. Would you like to share some of that? Well, first of all, we love being open, so it is better to ask the question than to just stay silent and ignore. That is the most important thing. 
However, it is very important as with transgender people, um, and I am not trans, so this is coming from an ally's perspective, but um, as I try to help my daughter, um, lots of people ask me questions. Is she on hormones? What, what was her name before? You know, are you gonna do surgery? And, and those kinds of questions are not questions that are um, polite. <laughs> so just so you know, <laughs> FYI, um, I don't ask other people about, you know, surgeries that they've had or what's in their underwear. And that's just kind of an impolite question to ask. Um, uh, and along that same line, medications that you're taking, I don't open up my medic medicine closet to you. <laughs> so I, and I'm sure you wouldn't to me either. So we just, we don't discuss those things openly, you know, in a public setting. Now, if there was a mom that was saying, my kid is going to go on hormones, what is your experience? Now, that's a different situation. You know, like we can share the experience we've had and um, and support each other in that way. But that's more of a private mm -hmm. conversation. If if a student or somebody has wants to open up the conversation w or with either a mom or with fellow students or and maybe feels uncomfortable. I know many people feel comfortable. Do you have any advice for people who are curious and want to know more and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe just want to learn um, in, in ways to approach the conversation with others? Um, the funny thing is, is when our story went public, um, I'd have people come up to me, and I own a store in Santa Clara, and they'd stand there, and I, they'd start, and sometimes tears would well up in their eyes, and I'd say, I think I know what you want to talk to me about. <laughs> and honestly, I'm so grateful when somebody will come up and say something, ask me a question, um, bring up the subject. A lot of people who approached me were people who wanted to say, hey, I, I offer you my support. I, I support Jordan. We love Jordan. You know, they were very positive and encouraging. And I have to be honest, there were some that I had judged that I thought, you know, this person is not someone I want to talk to. They're going to have, I had already formed my opinions of what their opinion was going to be. So what I ask people when they talk to me, and I ask them, I tell them thank you so much for approaching me and, and speaking to me about this, but now will you go and talk to someone else and let someone in that community know that you're there for them, that you're an ally because they don't know. And you know they're, they make assumptions too. And if you happen to be a member of an organization or a religion that um, is not necessarily welcoming, then they really think that you think in a certain way. So I would just suggest just take that step and open your mouth. And you may say something that's not quite perfectly correct, but if you do it with meekness and kindness and love, I think for the most part what I've seen, and I, I am, you know, I'm speaking as a mother of a gay kid. That's about all I know. But what I have seen and is that we just want connection. And we just want love, and, and so people are pretty understanding, as long as you're doing it out of a place of empathy and love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a kind question. Hey, I just heard this the other day, and, you know, and will you tell me more about it? Or um, what has your experience been? I'd love to hear your story. I had a cousin that came all the way from California and made an effort to sit down and have lunch with me, and she didn't make any pronouncements of judgment and she just said I want to understand better cuz I don't understand and and that was great that was amazing and I didn't change her mind or anything like that but she could understand where I was coming from better great well, thank you so much for that. And thanks for answering my questions. And now we'd love to take an opportunity to open it up. I mean, we we have such a special environment in this in this room. So is is there anything you'd like to know or anything you'd like to share? Yeah. Uh, oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm Joyce Tarantino, and I teach in the English department. Uh, and I just wanted to let you know that I'm an ally on campus. Uh, and I'm also a part of CAST, which is the care and support um, team for people who are struggling with depression and anxiety and things like that. 
And even if you're not my student, if you need someone to talk to, please come to my office. There's usually candy and toys and stuff. It's like totally comfortable. <laughs> I'm also a mama dragon, so if there's anybody who wants to talk about that, I know yeah. some things at least. She's your local mama dragon right there. I think we have a few <laughs> that are, you know, on campus. I'm sure there yeah, are, which is great. Thank you so. for identifying yourself. Yeah. That's awesome. So, sorry if I'm not the most eloquent, but this really is a sincere question. Um, so, my husband and I have this conversation a lot, actually, um, and it's kind of more directed towards you, but you're obviously <laughs> more than welcome to answer. Um, but as far as, like, using the right pronouns, mm -hmm. um, we always talk about how sometimes we feel like, just because of our core beliefs, you know, we're members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, um, but sometimes we feel like there's this big pressure on us to have to you know, use these proper pronouns with certain individuals, and sometimes we feel like that's almost taking away our own agency to what we feel and know to be true. Um, and so I'm kind of wondering, like, what your perspective is on that, mm -hmm. um, and if you can, like, kind of expound more on Yeah, I know, that that's issue. excellent. This is the conversation I've been having with a brother-in-law recently, actually, where he feels that um, by us requesting that he use female pronouns for our daughter, that's asking him to uh, go against his beliefs. And and it's hurtful for him. And on our side, it's hurtful for us as well. And, and that's, we just want to bridge that, you know, we just want to feel okay with each other. And um, so right now, our, um, our compromise is to use the name, because, you know, the name is, um, you could give anybody a nickname and it can mean anything, right? And and that's, you know, just being polite. That's the nickname she wants or her preferred name. I mean, it is more than a nickname to her. Um, as far as the pronouns go, it, it has to come from a desire. So if it isn't something that you desire, then, you know, you need to be authentic with that. And so... Um, what really changed my mind about the pronouns for me was, and, and made me feel okay to use my daughter's pronouns, was when um, someone in the I'll Walk With You group, a, a father said, when, when I use my son's male pronouns, it's like I'm saying I love you. I love you enough to call you what you want to be called. And, um, Personally, I think you can hold whatever beliefs you have and still use the pronouns that are supportive to that person. But, I mean, that's something you have to come to on your own. Yeah. And the only thing I might add to that is if you were in a group like this and able to just kind of be a fly on the wall in one of these groups, and you see the power of language and the power of words, the power to build up and the power to utterly destroy someone's heart, I think being kind comes before a lot of the other stuff. And so, you know, if you can maybe look at it in that, that um, maybe you're going to the core of your religious beliefs and just being Christ-like and being kind. Who else? Yes. Hi, my name's Lacey. And I'm president of Pride and Equality Club here on campus. Yay, and I just, yeah. I have a question that maybe some of us might be wondering. Um, what, I know that we cannot be mama dragons unless we are mothers, but I'm wondering if you have any ideas that have formulated in your organization for ways that we as junior dragons could perhaps <laughs> facilitate the cause, um, any kind of, of way that you think that we could promote volunteerism, any kind of project, just share some ideas that maybe you guys have, we could help Utah with this. Well, I just think, SUU, by the way, uh, we have in within our group, we'll have somebody, we just barely had someone say, okay, I'm sending my child to SUU, what, how, how's the environment? You know, it's always one of the questions, is it going to be safe, are they going to be loved, are they gonna be accepted? SUU gets really good marks, thank you. And, it, and I really believe it's because of, you people who are here, and maybe not everybody, I mean, a lot of you might be here just to learn a little bit more about what you can do. We, um, there are a lot of 
brother and sister dragons, you know, and that's yeah. what we kind of do. Sibling is, allies. Yeah, <laughs> we um, we love our baby dragons and we love our brother and sister dragons. And I just think, you know, it's hard to do a huge thing, but if you just do little things every day, reach out to those next to you, um, maybe be a little more supportive of your of your groups let's get that group bigger right so so that it's not just lgbtqia individuals but it's everybody i mean we're just all part of it right we're all just all together we have a lot of labels and right now we need these labels i think one i have a friend who used to just say why do they always have to come out why can't i mean i don't care but i think when your mom and dad keep trying to line you up with somebody you don't want to really go out, it's probably important to come out, right? <laughs> so and tell that's not just an assumed thing for everybody. Um, my suggestion is just support each other and maybe give, well, tell me the name of your group again. Uh, it's Pride and Equality Club. Okay, so let's build the ranks of the Pride and Equality Club. You mm -hmm. know, I think that's good work being done on the ground. And when there's a pride celebration, come and give us a hug. We do hugging yeah. booths. So come Free give us a them. hug, get a sticker, and and just that shows the mama dragon and pass it pass that along. When someone has a mom that that is still like trying to understand how to support their kid, yeah. refer them to us. You know? Right. We have cards here if you need them. Yeah, we have some literature here. And let me see if I can round up and you you all can correct me. We have Pride and Equality Club on Campus, SUU Allies, the Cast Organization, Mama Dragons, P Flag Meets, Wednesdays. No. Southern Utah Pride. Am I forgetting any uh, of our organizations that people can find out more about? If if I am, feel free to email me. We'll put them all up on the website. But there's a lot of different options to get involved and and mm -hmm. and to celebrate and and when Pride is around to to be there and and share the love and all of that. Other questions? Yeah, we've got one over here. Yeah. Um. So, how would you potentially? So, say hypothetically, someone joins, um, and they're really intent on being a mama dragon, um, but they don't have like a desire to become educated or like relinquish their personal beliefs. How would you deal with some of the like <laughs> potential bigotry that might come from that? That's a good question. <laughs> Something we deal with all the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't have a good pat answer for you um there are times that there are moms that are just not comfortable in mama dragons and we refer them to other organizations that align more with their beliefs um and just you know we want them to feel comfortable and a lot of times those organizations are you know maybe that's their home forever and but like in my case i started out in one organization and that became too conservative for me. And then I went to another organization and that became too conservative for me. And then I ended up in Mama Dragons where I felt safe and that was my, like my opinion was heard there. So, I, you know, that is something. Stepping that we, stones. Yeah, stepping really, stones. It is. And we, I'm pretty careful actually when I meet someone and I get a feel for where they are. I don't always immediately put them into Mama Dragons. I think sometimes there is a bit of you know, you've got to learn what you don't know. And I have, just to get that hypothetical person out there who's hoping that that mama will change their views a little bit, I have seen a lot of 180s happen. And sometimes it's really quick, like, sometimes we're amazed. We, yeah. went, to, oh <laughs> we went to dinner with, we had a little group <laughs> dinner down in uh, St. George and one mama showed up, and I mean, she could not stop crying the whole night. Yeah, it was cried just, the whole it was the first night. time she'd ever said out loud that her daughter yeah, was gay. Yeah, and we're and like, oh, we got a long ways yeah, to go. Yeah, we before. got a long ways to go with her. And you know what? The next week, was it? I, like, the next month. Ma, it was within a month. She started an LGBT youth group in our area. She runs the teen and group. It, like, this last she, month, 50 kids showed up. Yeah. I mean, so, it's... It, it's so, and then there are other people who just hold really tight to this thought. But the more they listen to other stories and understand, I mean, your heart can't stay there. You, you know, it just, 
it changes, but I think sometimes it's patient and also giving love back to those people. Uh, when uh, I feel like when people are defensive and they feel like they're being attacked, a lot of times they'll dig their heels in and they'll say, see, I knew it. I knew this is just bad. These are bad people. These are bad mamas. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when, they, when we give them a little grace, a little time, a lot of times that changes. And, and they can see that we're coming from a place of love. Like, um, they're, like with our story, like our neighborhood um, and our ward, they knew us. We'd been there like eight years at the time, and they knew us inside and out. They'd seen our kids grow up from babies, and they knew that we were not preaching to our kids these liberal, crazy ideas. You know, they knew where we were coming from. And so they realized that we were coming from a place of love, and that's what really helps change hearts and minds. And perhaps some relationships or friendships do break down, and 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 that's okay. Do you have any advice for that? I mean, have you had that happen? And then is that all right? Is that traumatic? What Can you talk about that a little bit? I think it's just part of it. You know, they say, well, we have the movable mi middle and then the 10% on each end, that we're not going to change everybody's mind. And, and that's okay. And that's what it is. And some, some of those friendships are naturally going to go a different direction. But the thing is, it's my child. My kid comes first. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Other, other questions? Yes. I just have to say that I became a little bit involved about 20 years ago with the gay movements in this area, and you guys have come an exponential distance since, <laughs> since then. I'm so impressed with how organized you are and how fast you're growing and all the things that you have available for people. And, and I, but I was just wondering, and I've always wondered this, if anybody knows what percentage of kids we have out there in, in every classroom who fit into one of these categories and how many of them we haven't found yet and how many we aren't reaching yet. Do you have, right. I, I'm sure so you can't give st yeah, statistics. Yeah, there's a study by UCLA, I think that's the best study I've seen so far that says about three to five percent um, of people identify as LGBT plus. Um, and uh, for transgender, it's like a fraction of a percentage um, of the of the population. Do you know when that study was? I believe it was 2015. Um, so you know it's a little outdated, but I, that's the best statistic I have at this point. So, I mean, if you look at that statistic, you're going to expect to see so three percent, three in a hundred, five percent. You know, one in every twenty. So one in a classroom probably, as you were saying. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing about that I want to mention is you said you've been doing this for, you know, 20 years or involved. We're in a, we're kind of on, standing on the backs of yes. giants, That's honestly. That's what I was just going to say. We stand on your shoulders. Yeah. There, we, there are there's no way. parents who went before us who did not have the support. They didn't, well, they didn't have Facebook. Come on. I know. <laughs> there was no social media. They didn't yeah. know who was yeah. out there so they dealing with this. I, I mean, I, it wasn't that long ago, and I didn't know. I mean, and we did have Facebook, but I didn't know that there were parents surrounding me or kids surrounding me within a mile radius of my home. I didn't know. Right, and so, like even three years ago, it took me a full year to find anyone else transgender in our county. Like I couldn't find them. I didn't know where they were, and I didn't know how to find them. So the people even doing this before media. were incredibly brave, and, and the kids who came out at that time, just, I just, my hats are, is off to them. Definitely. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Sorry, I already have the mic. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Sweet. Um, thank you for being here. I really appreciate this. Um, is there any kind of, two questions, is there any kind of Papa Dragons type organization out yes, there? Yes, and, and we what have that Dragon like? Dads. We do have Dragon Dads. And it's a smaller organization, but they are just as fierce. <laughs> and is that a separate website, or do they find them um, through you? If you, <laughs> yeah. Really so there may be a link on the website. I'm not sure. 
Um, but if there isn't, there will be a contact us and you can definitely find out through us. We awesome. will, we will direct you. Thank you. And, and I guess I'm curious as to how your, the hearts of your community has changed through your experience and them knowing you so well, uh, and how did it change other people's hearts and minds? <laughs> uh, well, speaking strictly from an LDS religious experience, um, I think it was November fi November 4th. It was the anniversary of the exclusion policy and I went to church and I was determined to sit all the way through church. I was determined with my rainbow pins and my, you know, the whole thing. And um and there was a really difficult lesson in our Sunday school class and I could not handle it. I got up and I walked out and I started pacing around the church. Just, okay, it's okay, this is what prophets have said, so of course they're going to say it, you know, and, and, and I can handle this, it's fine. And when I came back, there were half a dozen people wrapping their arms around me, tears, um, advocating for me. Um, it, it, there is no question, hearts have been changed. That's very powerful. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> When I came, I had been in a ward and had moved out, um, and my son came out during that time, and then I moved back in. Well, when I came back in, they invented callings for me. <laughs> the first one, <laughs> well, they know that I'm safe in nursery. I, either that or I'm... Or you can't I, contaminate the well, babies. Well, actually, I probably could start them early and corrupt them, but I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> we could, I've we served could. a lot of, I've done a lot of nursery in my time. <laughs> But I like it. It's good. But anyway, I came back in, and um, the Relief Society president really invented a calling for me. I was called to be the compassionate service leader specifically for families of LGBTQIA individuals. I was set apart in that calling, which was interesting because the man who set me apart, unbeknownst to me at the time, nor was his son out, um, had a gay son. He sobbed through the, the setting apart. I was um, in, we had visiting teachers at that time. I, the two that came to my house and one of them sat, well, they both sat down and one of them immediately starts to cry. And I said, my normal thing, usually when this happens it's because you have an LGBTQIA child, is that right? Yep, they did. The other one also started to cry. She also had a gay child. Both of their kids weren't out at that time. So our little visits were three-hour conversations. Crying fests. Cry <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, and I just want to say one thing, is that almost every parent, well, probably every parent that I'm personally friends with and know, and there's hundreds at this point, every one of them says they would not change their child now Absolutely. at all. Where before, you know, before they would have thought, oh, I would never want this to happen. We are so grateful for our kids just as they are. I don't want a non-gay Jordan. I need my Jordan as Jordan. Right. Um, my daughter is my daughter. Yeah. I mean, our kids are successful. Um, if, we, if we give them the support, they're just going to do fabulous things. We need them. We need their, all parts of them. So we say we cry. But that's just working out the yeah. the stuff. Yeah, like, that's all just this cultural stuff. Just working that out because the love is there, you know. Well, that's a beautiful sentiment to end on. Um, I want to say thank you so much to both of you for your time and being willing to share your story so honestly. Um, we do have tons of literature available. If you're interested in Mama Dragons, there's cards. If you want to know more about the Forever Network, if you want to know more, um, you can always email. You can email me. Um, it's just vartan at su.edu. That's on the Apex website. Um, they will be around mixing and mingling. If you would like to say something or come up, please feel free free. Um, yeah, but once do. again, thank you so much to both of you individually and to the Mama Dragons as a whole. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah.